Good morning. So great to be back again with you here for the Health Call Live radio hour. As I often say, it is the favorite part of my week. I look forward to this all week long, and especially today because we're talking with Dr. Scott Myers about what? About, yeah, COVID virus, right? The COVID-19 virus. We're here to answer your questions and give you a local read on what's happening and in the, how the hospitals are coping and just some general kind of round up the situation for you today. And so let me welcome Dr. Scott Myers to the microphone. Good to have you here. Oh, thank you so much for including me. It's, it's an honor to be on your show. I appreciate that. Scott is a clinical assistant clinical pre- professor at the IU School of Medicine here in Fort Wayne. He's also treating patients at Ascension Hospital and is a former uh, professor at the uh, Georgetown Medical School in Washington, D.C., where you had access to Dr. Fauci at the NIH. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, uh, Georgetown has a long history of a relationship with the National Institute of Health, NIH, which is in Bethesda, Maryland, which is a D.C. suburb. Mm -hmm. So I had a clinic there, as did several of my colleagues, uh, once a month. And it was interesting to see how they practice medicine because they treat every patient like uh, a particular study in a good way. That is, every patient gets a lot of attention and analysis, and it's really an optimal approach to care. Of course, that's not realistic to do throughout the community, but at an academic center, it's a good way to learn and to optimize care. Any doubt in your mind that he's the right guy to have standing right next to the president during all of this? No, I think we're really fortunate. I, I like to say that Dr. Fauci is to uh, public health what Michael Jordan was to basketball. And I, I think um, he has a great team. Uh, nobody does this on their own, uh, but he's the best leader. And especially in turbulent times, I think it's important that everyone look to a common leader so that we don't get mixed messages. Certainly a lot of that going around. What, what to you was the most significant development of the week as it applies to the, uh, this virus outbreak? Well, I think locally, we're still seeing everything as remarkably calm. And of course, we expect it's the calm before the storm. But remarkably, things in the Allen County and northern Indiana community have been reasonably uh, stable, and we're not near to the point of exceeding the capacity of our hospitals. Um, I think Dr. Burks made a great point yesterday when she said, what you and I can all do to sort of stop this virus and push back is to really take the guidelines seriously. Um, The way I think of it in my own words is the fastest path to end the socially social distancing which is disrupting um, everyone's life um, and businesses um, is to embrace the social distancing by nipping it in the bud I think we will um, allow it to be stopped or at least slow down more quickly and so I think we have to focus on what we can control in a community standpoint but at the hospital level it's been re- reasonably stable so my understanding is the hospitals are not just quiet, they're almost vacant. That's right. And the reason is because elective procedures um, and even a lot of elective well um, visits have been canceled or converted to telemedicine. Uh, A lot of providers are working from home. And so at this point, yes, it has been remarkably slow. um, And everyone anticipates that it's going to get more and more busy. The past few days have seen an uptick in hospital admissions, including COVID patients. But it's nowhere near to the point of being overwhelming. So if I am admitted with COVID here in our area, am I receiving that, I guess we'll call it an experimental treatment of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin? Yes, that's a, that's a very interesting question. And I talked to a number of colleagues yesterday. In fact, I just saw a PowerPoint given on the proper dosing. So the short answer is um, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin are being commonly given to sick patients who are COVID positive. Um, And just to put that in some context, um, the medical community relies on evidence-based medicine, which is basically expert consensus based on proven treatments. And when we don't have that, we look to monitored clinical trials. But those take time. Mm -hmm. And because this is happening so fast, uh, we don't always have that time. And so the CDC uses the term uncontrolled treatment um, on their website. But uncontrolled does not mean a rational. And obviously, local clinicians are doing the best they can, a pa- one patient at a time. Um, and I do think that this treatment combination makes sense, even though it's not the standard of care per se. But again, that goes back to 
looking to Dr. Fauci and the leadership so that we're all working in uh, consistency. It's been remarkable to me watching how the tenets of medicine and, and standardization has changed in this virus. The flexibility that we're seeing is, I've never seen anything like that before. Uh, you, you've got to welcome that as a clinician, right? That's right. I think innovation is the solution to so many problems. You know, too often we turn on the TV and we see a left perspective and a right perspective. So often I think innovation is just the best way to get results that work. And I think that um, Dr. Fauci and, and the president's team are doing a great job at trying to use organized and method meth methodological approaches, but at a faster pace. And, and I think that we are going to see more innovation that will apply to the future. So there is a website that I've been paying a lot of attention to, and we're going to talk about this in greater detail in the second half hour, but it, it projects hospital utilization rates. And when you take a look at what they are projecting for the state of Indiana, we're actually in pretty good shape. They're projecting that we're going to hit our peak hospital utilization about April 19th. We're going to be at that apex for three or four days and then a downward slope. They're projecting that we are not going to face any type of shortage for hospital beds. We will not face a shortage for ICU beds. We will not face a shortage for ventilators. All of that sound correct with what you're seeing right now? Yeah, that's right. That's been my personal observation and also speaking to a number of colleagues in Fort Wayne and Allen County. Um, one thing people have to keep in mind is that hospitals are really designed to add capacity when needed. Not just for this, but if you imagine a tornado or a 9-11 type of situation, hospitals need to be able to accommodate increasing number of patients. <clears throat> And so, yes, I think we're unlikely to exceed that threshold in, in our local community. All right. So yeah, if we all do our part and we keep away from one another like we're supposed to, uh, we won't have any kind of a capacity issue here. Let's talk about masks. You brought one in. My wife's been making some at home. I want to make sure that we all understand what the CDC policy shift is on the use of masks. They are not to protect me. They are to protect you. Walk us through that. Yeah, that's correct. I think the the more basic masks, such as a cloth mask, are good at preventing people from coughing and spreading germs to others. But as far as protecting um, ourselves, the best way to do that is simply by avoiding contact, which goes back to the social isolation. Now, it is true that if you have a surgical mask like I have here or an N95 mask, they will provide some protection. But even there, what's really important is that you have a tight fit. Mm -hmm. um, and the bottom line is the best way for each of us to protect ourselves is through isolation. Yeah, I don't know that people uh, know that um, we are um, we're working in an era where you're trying everything you can, and I suppose there's no harm in all of us walking around wearing masks. I mean, heck, you see that in Asia all the time. But again, I just want to make sure people understand that the purpose there is if you are asymptomatic or have very mild case, and with this virus, that happens, and you just may not know you're sick and you're spreading. So that's the reason that if you go outside, it's now recommended that you wear a mask. And uh, is your belief that just a, a, a cloth mask my wife is making at home is going to be effective? Well, for the purpose you mentioned, I think it does make sense. And of course, again, I, I look to Dr. Fauci and the national leadership and follow their guidelines. So yes, I would just echo what you said, that it does prevent spreading to other people. Um, and it, it does make sense to follow those guidelines. Put your headphones on. We're going to take a call real quick, and then we're going to jump out to a commercial break. Pat, go right ahead with your question for Dr. Scott Myers. Yes. Um, do you th don't you think that uh, the president could uh, solve all of this by uh, having a doctor in full hazmat suit uh, enter onto these uh, ships where uh, Navy people have gotten uh, coronavirus and uh, giving the 5,000, or not 5,000, 500 um, units of hydroxychloroquine and, uh, and zithromycin uh, to prove whether or not this would uh, kill coronavirus and then uh, 
You know, if, if well, I get it. So you're that. suggesting I get it. So you're suggesting we use we use the the aircraft carrier situation as a, a mini clinical trial. That's an interesting thought, Scott. Yeah, yes, that's but, that's correct. And Dr. Fauci discussed this yesterday that they're already um, doing this in New York City. So as far as the logistics of doing it in the metro area of New York versus a, a ship, that those logistics are are um, you know subject to interpretation, and that is a good idea. But the bottom line is it's happening right now in New York and it's happening quickly and I think that goes back to what we mentioned a minute ago about innovative approaches to quick trials. Glad to have you with us here for the second uh, segment in this half hour with Scott, Scott Myers, Dr. Scott Myers. He is a, an assistant clinical professor at the IU School of Medicine here in Fort Wayne, also in practice at Ascension Hospital. Pediatric is his specialty, but we're talking all things corona today. Moms, dads, and their kids, what are you advising about the virus for those guys? Well, most uh, hospitals have an organized approach to uh, basically triage or, or respond to the symptoms. Now. I'm getting a lot of phone calls from parents of children who have cold-like symptoms, sometimes with known exposures to COVID. Uh, but what's interesting is that kids seem to do remarkably well. And the reason for that is not completely understood, but most likely it has to do with the fact that the real danger with COVID is the excessive immune response, the sort of inflammatory, um, because the immune system is interesting in the sense that you want it to be robust enough to fight off germs, but not excessively engaged to the point where it's angry and making the patient sick. And that's what's happening with the adults who are getting sick. With kids, they are younger, their organ function, their lungs are much more resilient, and they tend to tolerate it much, much more better. So usually we're just doing supportive care, which means good fluid hydration um, and um, it's okay to take a Tylenol. Ibuprofen has been brought into question mm -hmm. so I might start with Tylenol and um, just just basically make sure your children are well hydrated. Call your doctor and discuss it on the phone, but typically they're not needing to come in the hospital. Great. Let's jump out to the phones. We have a couple callers queued up, so put those headphones on for me, doctor. Thank you. Uh, Jim Jim, what's your question for Dr. Scott Myers? Uh, he partially answered it the last time. My question is, for coronavirus infection, you don't want a too low immune system response, but I've heard you don't want too high immune system response either. Could he explain that a little bit? Yeah, the cytokine storm reaction with that uh, lung tissue. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great question. And, you know, it's interesting because we just talked about hydroxychloroquine, and the mechanism of how it works is not completely understood, but I think it's fair to say as a general concept, it helps to curb that excessive inflammation, that angry cytokine uh, overreaction, if you will, by the immune system. Um, so uh, um, and that, that's the basis of, of using these anti-malaria type treatments uh, to curb that excessive immune response. And the, the the role of the antibiotic, the azithromycin, they think, is also predominantly anti-inflammatory, although there might be some protective effect against the, the sepsis that can follow when you have that cytokine reaction in your lungs filled with fluid. I've also read that uh, doxycycline is also an acceptable substitute if you have, uh, some people just don't get along well with z -Pak at all, so that might be a way to go. Yeah, that's, that's correct, and, and these are all uh, great treatment options, and um, they make a lot of sense, and I think the community is doing a good job of trying to apply them appropriately. Jim, I hope that answers your question. We're going to move ahead to our next caller. Go right ahead. Hey, good morning. Hi, uh, my name is Mike. Good morning. Uh, part of my question was answered last time, too. I had a question about the, the cytokine war that's going on in your lungs. Uh, rather or not, your, a good immune system can be just as bad as, a, as one that where you have underlying uh, circumstances where you may be diminished. But uh, my, my quick question is, is, is the, the second part of that would be the damage being done by the lung where they're seeing uh, maybe fibrosis and also uh, they're thinking possibly now where uh, this virus is attaching to hemoglobin in the blood from people that's had it and recovered, but their O2 saturation rates are not as high as they normally would be. Can you talk a little bit more in depth about that? And then also a drug called uh, tricerabine, which has been around for a long time, mm -hmm. that I guess also uh, re re reverses the uh, fibrosis that may be happening in the lung tissue. 
Yeah, no, these are all good questions. And the truth is we don't completely have a complete comprehensive scientific understanding of these processes. Um, all of these medications have in common the process of trying to curb the excessive immune reaction. Um, the immune system is very complex. One of my physics professors used to say everything affects everything else. So you wanted to coordinate to fight the bad germs but not get so angry that it's attacking, as you say, the hemoglobin, the lungs, and all of these things. <clears throat> so sometimes we use the term immune modulation. That is <clears throat> to, to curb the immune system, to dial down that angry cytokine effect and these medications uh, all have in common that that role. Um, there's others that have been mentioned like remdesivir, which is an antiviral medication, but most of these medicines are involved with um, ca calming that angry immune response. And I also think it's effective to do it early. Um, uh, the earlier you start it, the more you stop the, uh, the snowballing effect of the immune system. Mike, thank Thanks for your call. Uh, Heather, we have a text message. Yes, we do. Uh, it says, my husband and son are still working. I am 71 and am diabetic. My husband is 70. What precautions do we need to follow when, when they get home from work and at home in general? Hmm. Good questions. Well, lots of hand washing. I'll tell you what Dr. Jamie Rutland tells his kids. Uh, Jamie Rutland is a pulmonologist and intensivist out in California. We've had him as a guest here several times. He makes his kids take off their shoes, change their clothes when they come home. Do you believe in that? Yes. I, I think that, again, it's hard to know exactly what makes sense from a scientific perspective, but on a common sense level, I think that um, changing your clothes, getting a shower, washing your hands as soon as you get home makes sense. I was talking to one of my nurse colleagues yesterday who said the first thing she does when she gets home is to do exactly that, change her clothes, take a shower. Um, again, the most effective way to prevent exposure is by simply avoiding um, social interaction in the first place. So if you don't have to go to work, obviously that's something that it's good to avoid based on the guidelines that are be get, given at the state and federal level. But yes, I do think it makes sense to wash your hands as much as possible and um, even getting a shower, changing your clothes when you get home are good ideas. So the wrap-up question, Dr. Scott Myers, is this. If you were advising the president, I, I am putting you in charge of deciding when we're going to lift these restrictions. What's the metric you're going to look at how are you going to make that decision? Well, from my perspective, I would focus on the decreasing number of new cases. We want to see that we're past the peak or the apex, if you will. And the truth is, we just don't know um, how soon that will happen. And we have to take it a day at a time. But I think what we need to see is a significant reduction in the number of new patients who are, are getting sick to the point of needing hospitalization. Um, and um, I would look at that as interpreted by Dr. Fauci and his team. And the, what's your belief on this coming around in the fall? Are we going to have a round two? Well, it does seem likely that um, it may dissipate in the summer and then come back in the uh, fall the way that the flu does. However, we hope that by fall we'll have much better treatments, we'll be more organized, and a vaccine will be in the near future. Sooner than sooner than a year than that they're talking about, you think? Well, it'll probably be about one year. That I honestly don't know. I would just be speculating. Um, but at the minimum, hopefully we'll have better treatments, and um, this should be less scary in the fall. Um, I would be guardedly optimistic that they may have a, a vaccination slightly sooner than a year, but probably not by much. Well, so I think we're going to leave this half hour with a wrap that uh, we're doing a pretty good job in this community of managing all of this. So congratulations, to everyone, for maintaining their distance. And I appreciate you coming in this morning, Dr. Myers. Well, thank you for having me. You bet. Dr. Scott Myers, assistant clinical professor at the IU School of Medicine, also in practice at Ascension Hospital. We'll be hearing more from him in the future, I can assure you.